So there's a lot of division in sports photography as to what file format you should shoot on. I get that. I get that there's a need for sometimes being on RAW and sometimes being on JPEG. Cards out on the table, the way I do it is very simple. If it's live action sports and there's quick turnover, it's JPEG. If it is um, like commercial stuff, in studio, portraiture work with clients and brands and athletes and stuff, it's shot in RAW so that I've got time to control stuff and all those kind of things. But there's one thing that a lot of people never really talk about. And for me, that is, as a sports photographer, regardless of what file format you shoot in, you should be able to shoot really, really well in JPEG. And the reason I say that's really simple, right? It's because as a sports photographer, you should be able to capture that moment that's happening regardless of what it is, whether it's a race, whether it's a match, whatever it is, whatever your sport is, you should be able to capture that moment in just the right way at just the right moment so that it looks amazing. Now, I get that there's an awful lot of like digital manipulation and stuff and there's some really, really cool Photoshop artists out there and I think that's great. But when it comes to sports, that doesn't happen very often, especially when we're talking about live action. So as much as you want to shoot in RAW or as much as you want to shoot in JPEG, like shooting in JPEG really like teaches you some really important skills. It teaches you to get your exposures bang on. And that doesn't mean that everything's nicely evenly exposed. That means that you're underexposing or overexposing depending on the photo that you want to create. So this is about you creating a piece of work, creating a, an image, a little piece of art on your camera without any other tools whatsoever. So Red Bull Photography have a like annual contest, well actually every two years they do it, where um, it's all about action sports and like most creative and all that kind of stuff. And this year they had a really interesting one which was uh, the raw category and that's basically images that come out of camera and don't get edited, don't get touched at all. And you should kind of, as a sports photographer, be aspiring to that. You should be, in my mind, aspiring to create like the perfect photo on your camera without any editing whatsoever. Because you're thinking about light, you're thinking about composition, you're thinking about direction of athlete travel, you're thinking about like how it's gonna look on the end of it, you're thinking about colors, you've already dialed your profiles in to make sure they're absolutely spot on. Those are all really, really important things to be able to do as a sports photographer. So even if you then shoot in RAW, you can go back to your computer at a later date and just tweak just ever so slightly. But if you're going out as a sports photographer and you're shooting a football match or a triathlon or whatever it might be, if you're shooting that on the wrong white balance with the incorrect exposure and it just looks horrible on the back of the camera, you're gonna be rescuing those photos if you're shooting in RAW and spending an awful lot of time on it. And that's not a great skill to have. A great skill to have in sports photography is that ability to capture that moment on the back of the camera and go, that's the one. That's the one that I don't need to edit. That's the one that I don't need to mess about with. That's the one that I can literally put out into the world straight away. And that's a really, really good skill for sports photography. It's just a personal belief. I get that there's probably a hundred comments gonna crack on now about people saying that I'm wrong. I'm not saying that you should shoot in JPEG or RAW. I've shot videos before where I've explained what I do. Rewind the start of this video and it will tell you exactly how I shoot on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you're interested to try it out, change your camera settings, figure out how your camera gets set up so that it's just JPEG only, and then go off and shoot. And don't edit, like don't edit anything. Like get your color profiles right, find a really cool black and white color profile, set it up on the back of your camera. There's plenty of stuff on YouTube about how to set color profiles and all that kind of jazz. Set your color profiles, go and take some absolutely stellar shots and try and, cr try and create some images rather than thinking, well, that'll come back in post. Spend that time doing that, that's a really good skill to learn so that when you then come back to shooting in RAW and you just go at it like you would normally do, you've got all of that stuff ready in camera and it's gonna look great straight away. That's a really good skill to have. There it is. If you haven't already, hit subscribe, hit the bell, hit like, do whatever you need to do. I really, really appreciate all the comments and subscriptions and stuff I've been getting lately. It's everything's on the up and up. It's very nice to have such a cool community here. So if you haven't already, hit subscribe. I do really, really appreciate it. Give me a follow on Instagram. Give me a follow on Instagram um, as well. I do an awful lot of my stuff on Instagram. Um, I do more there than I would say anywhere else. It's kind of the social media platform for me. Have an awesome rest of the day, have an awesome rest of the week, and I will see you next Tuesday on time, on schedule, and it's gonna be awesome.